We in East Africa, uh, I think, are convinced that Africa has two tendencies, if, if you will, strategic tendencies. One is the tendency of integration, which will, in our opinion, drive African growth. The other is a very real tendency of disintegration. Those two tendencies have been there since our foundation and uh, they still exist. So you see the East African community and its tendency in integration. And then we've seen uh, issues uh, in Mali and elsewhere where there are tendencies of disintegration. And these are not politically neutral. Therefore, we must harness our energies towards integrating our economies. What are we trying to solve in East Africa by having this community? I think there are two, there are many things we are trying to solve, but I don't have the time to go into them. I will only point to three. One is to make sure that our countries, those coastal states, have a functional hinterland, and that those landlocked countries which are hinterland have access to regional and global markets. That is a natural what we are trying to do. Why is this important? If you look at uh, a container of goods from China to Kenya, it costs about $1,000 to transport that container. It costs over $3,000 to, to transport that same container from Mombasa to Bujumbura. Meaning that Kenya's hinterland, in practical terms, is China or Asia. Those are its markets. And yet these are very inefficient markets because these are markets which are interested in Kenya's raw materials. Now, on the other side, you have a hinterland of 130 million people and growing, which is a rich market for all the reasons that uh, the African Development Bank has pointed out, but which is not well served because it is not integrated. Integration, as I conclude, integration has brought areas which we thought were not competitive to the fore. Ugandan education systems, the Ugandans are exporting education to East Africa. This is not an area they thought they would be strong in, but these are opportunities which we have seen. Uh, we, have, we now have uh, in Rwanda, we, there is a, a growing film and cultural industry. Cultural industry in Rwanda. They are now calling it Hollywood. <laughs> Something we never thought integration, you know, would lead to. Second, I see a lot of uh, opportunities in trade in basic manufactured goods, which is why we have now a regional industrial strategy and policy. Imagine the idea of all our countries going out to look for investors in our region and then confining them to markets which don't work. If Burundi tries to go to convince Toyota to come and open a heavy industry manufacturing plant in Bujumbura, that's probably not likely to happen because the supplies, the parts will come from the rest of the world. Maybe this industry would like to be in Mombasa or Dar es Salaam, the coast. But what prevents this industry located in Mombasa from benefiting the people of Burundi? Nothing. In fact, the people of Burundi will complain about an industry located in Mombasa because their people do not have access to employment in that industry. That's the only reason they complain. And two, that the taxation, the tax structure is, is, is in such a way that it benefits the country of production, not the country of consumption. Being very simplistic, I'm sure the economists would have theories around all these. <laughs> if you can solve those two, make sure that an industry in Mombasa can employ as many 
Kenyans as Burundi access full access to employment and you change the structure of taxation then you have a real regional industry after all I'm told uh, some of our airlines I'm told that um, there is an, an airline in the Middle East that employs more Kenyans than Kenya Airways <laughs> the, uh, Emirates employs over 800 Kenyan air hostesses. Kenya Airways is around 700 something. So as long as we can sort out employment and labor mobility and look at taxation issues, then we really have very low hanging fruit to have real regional growth. And finally, trade in services, including financial distribution, educational services, and so on. Integration as I conclude, integration has brought areas which we thought were not competitive to the fore. Ugandan education systems, the Ugandans are exporting education to East Africa. This is not an area they thought they would be strong in. But these are opportunities which we have seen. Uh, we, have, we now have uh, in Rwanda, we, there is uh, a growing film and cultural industry. Cultural industry in Rwanda. They are now calling it Hollywood. <laughs> Something we never thought integration, you know, would lead to. So the growth in services, financial services, in banking, in education, in culture, uh, I think uh, are areas where we, 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 we see low hanging fruit. So, and finally, governance issues. So to answer your question, is regional integration, I believe, is the bread and butter of Africa's growth. We have to invest in it. We have to open our markets. But most importantly, we have to break the barrier of fear between Africans themselves. When an African moves across the continent, you can see the barriers in their movement. It's as if we imagine that Africans moving on our continent are criminals and we find ways of stopping them from moving. This is, I think, the, the biggest barrier that we need to break if we are to reap uh, uh, the benefits of innovation and economic development in the next 100 years. I thank you.